Hi, I would like to show you with Plinker, which is an R package to work from Plink, uh, an R package to work with Plink, um, how to how awesome it can simulate datasets for you. So there's actually already a YouTube video about that. I will briefly go through it. Um, so um, so Plinker it can do a quantitative trait analysis using Plink. Plink is used in GWAS studies, genome-wide association studies. Um, and you can easily do that. Um, so there's a vignette I already showed about. It creates, uh, there's a function, and I'll talk a lot about this in this video, called create demo association of quantitative trait parameters. And it creates a set of uh, parameters, like a, like a simulated data set uh, to you do your quantitative trait analysis with. So it creates a is a, a genetic mapping table. It creates a pedigree. So this is the pedigree part, um, which are all, all unrelated individuals. And it will create the genotypes, the SNPs. Uh, you see it's mostly biallelic here. And also it creates phenotypes. It can be random or additive or epistatic. Um, and they're all discussed in detail in that video. So here you see the result, what Plink gets out of this. And that's not what I want to talk about, but this I want to zoom in on how flexible the creation of creating those simulated data sets is. So I'll be closing this vignette and instead I'll be running the vignette that shows off uh, this functionality. So also actually I, I run the vignette so that you know that it really works. Uh, and I'll be showing uh, this create demo association queued prompts in a lot of different settings. And the vignette has more text about it. Uh, also, I don't I do not do pretty printing here. So I load Plink, and then I can create this demo association for quantitative trait parameters using a quantitative trait. For example, this is just a quantitative trait, and that works. There com comes something out of it. It's displayed here, no pretty printing here at all. Um, but you can run, uh, you can call a sock cute, which is a plinker function to do to call plink in the back to do a um, association study for quantitative trait. So that's a random trait. Already notes that it says traits here, which is plural, uh, but you can also put in uh, one trait like this. So that's a random trait. Uh, another one is an uh, oh, of course you can also put in more individuals. You can specify that. That's important. Uh, to get more statistical power in your simulated data sets. Um, also, maybe you want to change the minor allele frequencies. So here we create uh, a data set for a random trait, but now the minor allele frequency is 0.1. So by default, I think it's 0.25, which is a big number, which is great for demonstration purposes. Uh, but if you want to have a lower minor allele frequency, you can set it to any value like uh, between 0.5, excluding 0.5 and zero, excluding zero. Um, already here, it also says MUFs, minor allele frequencies, um, because you can also specify a tree allelic trait, so that you have, uh, so this is, so that you have the minor allele frequencies of 0.2 and 0.1. That means the major allele frequency will be 0.7, uh, and for the first nucleotide will be shown to be zero, so it will be absent. Um, so that's how you can simulate, in this case, a random trait with three alleles. Um, you can't see it here, and that's just fine. But uh, Plink, can, uh, you can use it uh, for your association studies. Note that Plink does not handle those traits. Um, it will make them missing data. It will give you a warning as well on that. So it will only work with the common and the minor allele. Uh, but Plinker can also do a quadrilateral trait, uh, so we specify the minor allele frequencies, and then even, to, and then the both two rares. Uh, it has to be in decreasing size, and also the major allele. Uh, uh, in this case, it's 0.4 because 0.4 plus 0.3 plus 0.2 plus 0.1 is one. Um, 0.4 is the highest value, then the minor allele is 0.3, that the more rarer one has 0.2, and the rarest is 0.1 as a frequency. So here we simulate a quad allelic trait. You can do that in Plinker. Uh, Plink will ignore uh, those two rarest alleles. 
So these are all random trades. So we did random trades with multiple people, with multiple individuals, I should say, um, and also with different minor allele frequencies. So that's all nice and dandy. Uh, but maybe you want to do something more interesting, like an additive trade. So you can create an additive trade, uh, which has a very simple phenotype. Um, it's either uh, it's completely linearly additive. So it means that the homozygote for the common trait has the lowest value. The, high, the heterozygous already has an increased value for the phenotype, which is called additive. Uh, and the homozygote for the rare traits, for the rare alleles, has the highest value. Uh, so you can see that. So you can use that. Uh, that's the documentation for calc additive phenotype values for the exact calculations. Also, there's a trait called epistatic. You could also call it um, a multi snip trait or a poly genic trait yeah you could call it all like that uh, what it means that it takes two snips to determine a trait and that's not that the interaction is non-linear um, so that means that uh, an epistatic trait actually creates two snips and only if both snips have a rare allele then the phenotype changes so it's not linear you really need more snips to have a value to have a change in phenotypes it's just not one snip is not going to cut it you really need two snips uh, that both need to have uh, a rare um, allele. So already I hinted on the word traits. Uh, that's a plural. Uh, it's because you can put in more traits. For example, you can do well. That, so let's say you want to do a random trait, uh, but you want to um, get two random traits. So you get a bit of a distribution of of results from from Plink. Let's say because um, if you run Plink, you get an R squared value. Uh, which means um, that's the proportion uh, of the phenotype it can attribute to the genotype. Um, and for a random value, this should ideally be zero because it's completely unrelated. Um, but for a, for, but of course, Plink can always fit this to a can always fit the data to a straight line. Um, the chance that this line will be exactly horizontal which means exactly zero is close to zero for um, uh, because data sets are finite instead of infinite, uh, those kind of things. Um, so maybe you have a smaller data set and you want to create a random trade with, let's say, uh, with, with a couple of individuals. Uh, and you want to get see the distribution of those R squared values for multiple random traits. You can do that by creating multiple random traits. You see a distribution of R squared values and you get an idea um what how multiple random traits are uh, interpreted by Plink uh, and their distribution um, but you can also say all right i want a random trait with different minor allele frequencies um so uh so we create a actually it even uses two traits uh, you could use both random traits here if you want uh, but here the random trait has a minor allele frequency of 0 0.2 and the additive trait has a minor allele frequency of 0 0.4 so you can do that um, you can also put in two different traits, like a random one and an additive one. Um, and the, um, there's also a demonstration function. If you leave out all the parameters, it will create a trait that is both random and additive and epistatic. And it will create four snips. The first snip is, is related or maybe unrelated to the random. Snip two is related to the additive trait. And snips three and four are related to the epistatic trait. Um, and you can use all combinations of those traits as long as they're in a list. Uh, if it's one trait that works, if it's multiple traits in a list, that works. If it doesn't work, you get a proper error message, hopefully. If not, please send me a bug report. Um, also, these prompts that come out of it should work on Plink uh, or give the same warnings as Plink does. If not, please send me a bug report. So here I conclude this video. I've showed off uh, the, f the, the flexibility of the create demo a SOC cute prompts function, which creates a demonstration data set of simulated data to be used with a SOC cute function to do a association on a quantitative trait. Um, I used the Plinker package for it. Uh, you can find it on GitHub, you should build a big slash Plinker. Um, and there you can 
find the code, the tests, uh, the other YouTube videos, also some examples, those kind of things. All right, so if you find something weird, please send me an issue. You can do that here or send me an email or whatever you like. That was it, and I wish you a very good day. Bye.